I got stung this week. Yeah. Three times on the face, two in the eye, or two right in the corner of my eye. Yeah, it just barely hurts now, but man, that first day, I felt like I was punched in the face. And I've been punched in the face as a child, so I know what it feels like. Grade school playground drama. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Melissa, your Plantita Abogada here at Tasteful Nodes, coming to you today with a Hederaceum episode. So today we're going to discuss the wonderful world of Philodendron Hederaceum. Hederaceum. And I've got a few varieties here on the table. Yeah. All of these guys. Hederaceum. I know what you're thinking. You see some plants that you recognize, but I promise it's not quite like you think. So it's because of these differences that you see here on the table that a few of these plants were described to be their very own species. Incorrect, but true. So you see the Philodendron Brazil on the table. I'm sure you see that. I'm sure you see the Philodendron Meekins on the table. Yeah, we'll get into that in just a little bit because today we're gonna to be talking about Philodendron Hederaceum, the different varieties within this species and the ones that I have in my collection. Before I get started, I like to go through my disclaimers really quickly one KK Bitayo Kanya Kanyang Bayad. If you see anything that looks great on the table and you must have it in your collection, please don't spend your rent money because I'm not paying any plant child support. Number two, I'm not an expert. I'm an attorney by training and anything I say here will either be based on my own personal observations and experiences or on factual information that I found. Now the factual information that I do share with you I'll be sure to provide a link to those sources on the screen as well as in the description box down below. And then number three, because I'm not an expert, any of the care tips that I may inadvertently share or drop here and there, they may not be applicable to your areas just because of the differences in growing conditions. Autumn is right upon us right now, so we are in different parts of the world. Just be sure to find people in your neighborhood, in your areas who have raised these plants, who can give you advice on to how many hours of sunlight or grow lights that they need. Find those people in your area who could give you that information and help these plants flourish in your care. So Philodendron hederaceum is found in a wide range of places from Mexico to the West Indies, all the way down to much of South America. Their appearances are just as wide ranging as, as their distribution. And that's what we're gonna to discuss today. So we're going to discuss the three varieties within Philodendron hederaceum. So that's the variety, the var hederaceum, the var oxycardium, and then we're gonna discuss one more that's not on the table very, very briefly, just because it's really important to have these three mentioned, and that is var kirkbridei. So let's talk first about philodendron hederaceum, variety hederaceum. So the philodendron hederaceum, var hederaceum, is better known as philodendron meekins, or the velvet heart leaf philodendron. And that's because its leaves actually have this really velvety texture to it. It's a beautiful velvety green, I mean green and velvet in the front. In the back you still retain that texture. It's really pleasant but the backside instead of being green is violet and you've got these wonderful contrasts of colors as you could see from the front and the back just because these vining plants if you give them something to climb they will and they'll climb in all sorts of fashions and they'll climb until there's nothing there and then they'll fall over and then they'll find something to hang on to again and they'll climb again and that's what's so nice about this plant is that you get to see all these colors and textures mixed together and it's really wonderful. Uh, the petioles are a pink for the newer growth. For the older growth you do see some of that violet that's still left behind but not so much. The stems are actually quite smooth, smooth to the touch even. I should go ahead and quantify that by saying that this, that's what the petioles and stems look like on a younger plant, right? On a juvenile plant. This is where it gets interesting. So once they climb and they're allowed to climb for a really long time, they get bigger. And when I say bigger, I'm not joking. They get huge. Yeah, so look at this guy and look at this guy in comparison, right? I mean, just giant. And I love seeing this. So the velvety texture that we love so much in the juvenile leaves kind of get lost as they mature, but it retains this 
beautiful green, this deep green. And it also, I guess, achieves this kind of glossiness to it. Um, yeah, it's just really lovely to see in the sunlight. I mean, it's not as velvety as that, and you can't feel it as velvety as that. But it's really, really pretty to look at. It's glossy. The petioles still remain smooth. However, they also lose that pink or purple that I was telling you about for new growth. They lose that as well. So what I have here on the table for the Var Heterosseum is this juvenile form, this mature form, and this guy, a variegated Meekins. So with a variegated Meekins, it retains the same texture as a juvenile Meekins, but it doesn't have, oddly enough, that purple back as obvious as this guy, right? See? And this is an older stem, and it shouldn't have that as vivid as it is, but this only has the purples around the margin. This is what differentiates the Var Heteroseum, the Meekins, from the Var Kirkbridei. Like I said earlier, I don't have that specimen on the table. It's kind of a rarity. I wanted to say uncommon, but I'm going to say rarity just because it isn't easy to find in cultivation. It kind of looks like the Var Heteroseum. It looks like the Meekins, right? Let me get my notes. I have some really important details to talk about. I have here, yeah, it looks mostly like Meekins, but with important differences. This is what the important differences are. The adult stems are ribbed on living plants, so a lot more striated than what I have here. Dried stems are reddish brown and ribbed. So weakly ribbed versus more ribbed because of the whole, I guess, dehydration process. You know how things dry up. It's more obvious on dried adult stem specimens. Kirkbridei is also usually warty, meaning it's got bumps on it, right? And as I mentioned earlier, there are no bumps anywhere on the Var Heteroseum, on the Meekins. Kirkbridei generally occurs at higher elevations in wetter forests, and it is named in honor of Joseph Kirkbride, who first collected the specimen in 1968 in Panama while a graduate student at the Missouri Botanical Garden. So it's a special, special heteroseum. It's definitely something worth looking into if you are a fan of heteroseum. I mean, it's easy enough to collect heteroseum, but to find a Kirkbridei, I think that's that might be my next goal, <laughs> to be honest. And finally, I wanted to go ahead and discuss the third member of heteroseum. So we discussed first the Var Heteroseum, then we discussed the Var Kirkbridei, and now we're going to discuss the Var Oxycardium. So that would be these guys, all of these guys. This guy right here, Heteroseum Var Oxycardium, which is better known as Philodendron Heartleaf. And I think it's known as Philodendron Heartleaf for two reasons. One are the heart-shaped leaves, as you can tell here. It's something that has in common with the Meekins though, the heart shaped, but the name, Oxycardium. So cardium, cardio, heart, yeah. Even more reason to call it the <laughs> philodendron heart leaf. Let me get my notes because I have some important information to share about this. I have here that its synonym is actually philodendron scandens subspecies Oxycardium. So remember what I said at the beginning of the episode where there, where the differences between each plant give it a name where the differences between mature forms and juvenile forms gets it another name the heteroseums all have different names due to you know those differences and scandens was one of the names that was applied to the heart leaf to the oxycardium the juvenile blades are glossy on the upper side yep in comparison to the meekins which is actually velvety and then it is green underneath. Yes, as opposed to the Meekins, which actually has a velvety underside, which is purple. So it's green, 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 green everywhere. Yeah, this is interesting. I never thought of it that way. Yeah, so this is an interesting fact. Interesting fact about the Oxycardium is that its leaves are two and a half to three times bigger than its petioles are. And when you look at it, you see it it's just so obvious really 
the petioles keep getting shorter as the leaves get longer. And that's opposed to these guys who have really, really long petioles. And, but when I fold the leaf over, over the petiole, I mean, it's got maybe an inch more on top of the petiole. So the petioles for the heart leaf are indeed much shorter than the leaves are, if that makes any sense. The sinuses are actually triangular and are narrowly closed. And you could actually see that right here as well. There's like um, a slight dip, a slight indentation in the middle. And it's kind of, it's kind of like leveled, it's flat. And then it's rounded on the bottom. So the stems of the oxycardium are actually more comparable to the stems of the mecans in that they're smoother and greener, where the mature mecans is actually striate on top. This one is smooth. It, it's smooth and green. There's nothing like that sort. And I'm looking at the more mature Brazil as well, and I see the same thing, just smooth. So this is where it's gonna get interesting. Within the variety oxycardium, I think we could also break it down into three cultivars. We have the variegated heart leaf right here. We have the Brazil right here. And then we have the Aram, the lime right here. So those are the three cultivars that belong under philodendron heart leaf or oxycardium. So discussing the variegated heart leaf, as you can see here, the first leaves are variegated. The bottom leaves don't appear to be variegated, but on closer glance, they are. You do have, they are darker, but there is variegation that remains. And it's really, really interesting to see. It really is. The stems are smooth. As we mentioned earlier, the petioles are green. There is no coloring underneath. It's still smooth and glossy. And the only difference between the two is the fact that this guy is variegated. So it's, it's quite interesting. The variegation doesn't stay white forever, but it's there as newer leaves, and it's just really pretty. It's, it's a stunner. The Aureum, right over here, clearly is another cultivar because it's different. You could tell by the phenotype alone, which is the physical characteristics, right, that it is a different version of the heart leaf. In fact, it's a lighter version the, I think it was Siddharth, and I have to go find it just to give credit to him, where he said that this is not the Philodendron lemon lime. This is actually known as the Philodendron heterosaeum aureum, or Philodendron heterosaeum lime. Now, the last cultivar that I mentioned earlier is the Brazil, and that's B-R-A-S-I-L. It's spelled with an S, not with a Z, and we know that for a fact because it's patented. Let me get my handy dandy notes for you. We know it's with an S because that is how it's spelled in patent number USPP 12956P2. The Brazil was patented by Ruben Ernesto Acosta and assigned to Twyford International in 2000. So pretty recent history. The patent describes the Philodendron Brazil as having unique dark and yellow-green variegated leaves. A leaf for the Brazil is normally elongated and has a narrow apex. The patent continues with the cultivar Brazil has not been observed. I'll just dive right into this. There, there's a reason why I say that there are three cultivars of oxycardium, the variegated, the aureum, and the Brazil. And it's because the Brazil actually has a whole bunch of other plants that are being sold as cultivars of it based on the pattern variegation. However, this is the sticking point um, of people who are opposed to these plants being known as cultivars. According to the patent, it says that, and I quote, the cultivar Brazil has not been observed under all possible environmental conditions. The phenotype may vary somewhat with variations in environments such as temperature, light, intensity, and or fertilizer rate, without, however, any variance in the genotype. Meaning the genes won't change, but the appearances can change based on a number of these different conditions, stimuli. And if you have 
a plant that is patented and is known to have a variety, a wide range of variegation from dark green to yellow green, you know, it kind of, it kind of covers all the bases of anything else that might come up. You know, how are you going to say that this is a new cultivar? For example, this cream splash, how are you going to say the cream splash is a new cultivar when the patent says that it covers all of these colors? So it's like a catch-all phrase for anything that followed the Brazil, you know. But because I'm not choosing sides and I'm actually undecided on this whole situation to begin with, I mean, I understand where these people are coming from when they say things like that because the Mayari actually shows, the, the plant that I named, actually shows a lot of variation within it, its appearance as well. I mean, it has leaves that are sectoral in nature, so you've got, you know, the half moons, the really clear, vivid variegations. And then you also have the mints. You also have the really long Mayaris. And these are all my specimens. These are not things that have come out of anywhere else. And I still consider all of them Mayari, just because they're all the same plant. However, I know that some people within the country have been selling their mutated Mayaris triple the price of a regular Mayari, which if, you know, it was something that was taken from my garden, I would still say it's the same Mayari because it's the same group of plants. So Siddharth's argument in one of the um, posts that I read recently was that the variegation, I already read to you what the variegation says in the patent, but it also says that, and I quote him, it shows variability depending on different growth conditions. So I don't see how other cultivars can be named within this range. So if the range is that yellow green to dark green, varying colors between, um, they have to be Brazil, then yeah, there is that argument to be made. However, if you find a mutation <laughs> this is weird. It's a mutation off of a mutation, right? But if you find a mutation and it's something that you propagate and it shows over and over again with stability, and this is where, you, you know, I pull my experience with the Mayari in. If you could show that this mint remains mint with each and every single leaf that comes out of it, then it might just be a new cultivar. Sure. Um, if you could show that this Mayari with the really long leaves can actually retain that long leaf shape without changing or going back to its original leaf shape, then yeah, maybe you could say it's its own cultivar. But without that stability, without that years of proof of stability, I wouldn't even suggest selling a Mayari as something else, as a mutation, if you can't prove it. So this is the regular uh, Brazil, right? Regular Brazil. You've got that dark green and the lime green in between. And you have another shade of color which is referred to as silver oftentimes. And let me see if I could grab my other pot of Brazil really quick. Yeah, he's a mess. As you can see here, there's a light green variegation in the middle, and then there's darker green on the outside, and then there's this other lighter green, which is not as light as in the middle, but it's lighter than the outer layers and that's where all of the confusion comes from as you can see from this leaf as well if you look in the back you can't see this lighter variegation the silvery variegation from the back but you do see this l completely lime green variegation from the back you see it right here so these are the brazil they have a wide range of colors of patterns as far as how wide the patterns get that could vary as well but in the interest of fairness and covering all my bases, I'll go ahead and discuss the varieties that I have on the table. I have the Cream Splash, I have the Silver Splash, I have the Rio, the Gabby, and the Carnival. So those are the five I have. I noted here that collectors of these Brazil cultivars differentiate the plants based on variegation patterns. And we should probably discuss that now. The Silver Stripe is actually something that Gabriella Farms recognizes exists. And it's, it's, it's a plant, it's a variegation pattern that has that silver in the middle rather than just the green, the lime green. And it is this guy right here. Yeah, this one is interesting. So the silver stripe is a dark green on the outside, 
a silver right here, and then a cream or a lighter green on the inside. And there's this, it's just weird, I can't even describe it. You can see it here too. So you've got this dark green on the outside, you've got this silver stripe right there, and then you've got this cream right here in the middle. That's what the silver stripe is supposed to be. We're gonna go ahead and compare that guy to the Rio really quick, just because of how similar they sound. So the silver stripe was described as a dark green, a silver, a cream, whereas the Rio is described as a dark green, a silver, a cream, and then another silver. So this is the Brazil cultivar Rio, is what they're calling it. It's exquisite to look at, but even between the leaves themselves, like there's just no one general pattern. So it's something that you have to look at closely and kind of remember what the coloration is supposed to be. So this information was taken from an infographic by Gabriella Plants. And this one right here is actually another one of those Rios that I mentioned. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, I don't know how to describe it. See, so they say that it's dark green, silver, cream, silver again. All those colors are here, but not in the exact same way that they're saying. And this is a Rio. The next plant that I have here is a cream splash. This guy right here, this was gifted to my husband and it's been in the greenhouse for a while. I really need to do something about his pot. It's really sad. So the cream splash is actually described as a dark green, a cream, and a light green. And I kind of see it, you know, you've got the dark green and the cream, but it's like, they're not can you just be nice to me and show me what I need, right? In all of the leaves. So here we go. We've got a dark green. We've got the cream right here. And then we've got the light green in the middle. So this is my cream splash right here. Who else do I have on the list? So what I have here is a philodendron gabby. And according to Gabriella plants, the plant is supposed to be a lime green, a cream, and then a light green again. And you can see that in many places here. So lime green, a cream, a lime green, and then another lime green again. <laughs> but what's interesting about the Gabby is that according to Gabriella plants, often entire leaves can become cream in color and will shrink drastically in size and growth spread. And the issue with that is that plants that are lighter in color have a harder time growing so it would be interesting to see if this guy continues with his newest plans of just spreading all of the cream all over the place. As you can see here, more lime green than anything um, and a cream and then more cream here. It's just, it's not a completely stable um, cultivar just yet, but the colors are really lovely and much more obvious than my Brazil's clearly, and my cream splash <laughs> right here, just because this guy doesn't have much in it either. Interestingly enough, Gabriella Plants has a cream splash as a dark green, a cream, and then a light green in the middle, whereas a Gabby is light, cream, and then light again. Final plant, or final Brazil cultivar on the table is this guy, and this guy is a carnival. This is a Brazil philodendron brazil carnival it's a sport what happens is it has this cream on the side and then the silver on the middle and all i could find is that the silvery green center regular brazils don't have uh, the sport seems to be fairly stable found on multiple plants but i mean it's it's not the fastest grower i have here it is nice though and that is it for today's episode I'm really curious to see where you guys stand on the Brazil controversy. Do you think that these guys are all their own cultivars of Brazil? Um, or do you think that they're just different kinds of Brazils and should remain their Brazil? <laughs> I'm not trying to cause any trouble. I'm just genuinely curious because 
like I said, I mean, I could see both sides of the argument, and I'm wondering where everybody else sees the argument lying to. Anyway, I'd like to thank my friend Al for providing some specimens for me today. He provided the Rio, the gorgeous Rio in the corner. He also provided the Silver Stripe, the Carnival, and the Gabby. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much, Al, for helping complete the Brazil part of this collection. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, feel free to give this video a like. Subscribe to my channel, click that notification bell so you get notified of future content. If you miss me during the week, if my once a week videos aren't good enough for you, check me out on Facebook. I'm there as Tasteful Nodes. If you just need pretty pictures or videos to look at right before you doze off at night, check me out on Instagram. I'm there as Tasteful Nodes as well. Okay guys, until next time, sa so, ulitin. Keep your notes classy and tasteful. Bye.